Chocolate chip pancakes. Chocolate chip pancakes? You can't just stop what we're doing. This here. is an IHOP? everybody, welcome to Wild at Home, I'm Richie. Welcome to today's episode, which is fish and chips. You do it right, it's a crispy, salty, flaky, toothsome treat. Do it wrong, it's a soggy puddle that sits in your gut after you eat it, and there's not enough beer in the world to wash it away. So we're gonna do it right, because we're wild at home, and we got nothing else to do. So I'm gonna break down a couple things for you, a couple tricks, a couple tips, and uh, we're gonna use the best fish possible. And for today, that's gonna be halibut. Halibut. So this is incredible halibut from our Sika salmon fleet. It's this dense, flaky, mild, but slightly sweet fish. Everything is caught in our long line fisheries. So before we get to the fish, we got a couple other things we got to do first. Let's get our potatoes going first, because it's going to take the longest. It's going to take about 45, maybe even an hour to do your chips. So waste no time. Let's dive into that. First thing you want to do, get your water going. Pot of water, cold water. Dump out some, add some more. That's about three, four cups maybe. Two and a half really big pinches of salt. And then the trick, this is why you're watching, is a little bit of vinegar, about two tablespoons. Vinegar is going to allow these very fluffy russet potatoes to stick together a little bit more. I'll talk about it more later. How do we talk about it now? Yeah, we'll talk about the potatoes now. I'll finish talking about the vinegar. Um, I want to talk about these potatoes first. I don't want to talk about vinegar anymore. You guys, I got some old potatoes, okay? Don't judge me for my potatoes. They might be a little weird, but you know what? They're still delicious. All these little sprouts are doing is what nature intended, which is turning the sugars and starches of the potatoes into growth. And who am I to judge that? Now, you're gonna cut your potatoes a lot thicker than you probably think you should. The reason is potatoes are gonna shrink when they're starting to bake, and I don't want them to get so small that they get over crisped, because we're gonna bake the hell out of these things, and we're gonna boil the hell out of these things. Okay, what is that, a half an inch? Half an inch or so, give or take. So now we wait for the water to boil. What's that old saying? Oh, I could start my oven. I go all the way up to 500 to get it ripping hot. You can do a little jig, you can do a little dance, but it won't make a difference because it'll take all the time in the world to boil, to boil. It sounds like it's boiling. You're gonna gently put in those potatoes. They're gonna, ooh, that's hot. <laughs> They're gonna boil for about 10, 15 minutes maybe? So in about 15 minutes, these are so much fluffier but because of that vinegar, they're still kind of sticking together, which is what we wanted. Our oven's heated. We're gonna drain these. Gentle drain. You don't want to uh, jostle them. Don't rinse them. Just let them cool. I'm gonna set mine right here. Again, you're gonna be really tempted to like toss these potatoes and get the extra water out. Don't do it. It will break them up in about a second. I'm going to oil the snot out of these. Same with your pan. Get everything a little space to breathe. They will not crisp if they're crowded. So this is gonna go in your middle rack at about 500 for about 15 minutes. We'll see you guys in a minute. Yep, it's time to flip. All right, so it's been about 25 minutes or so. We're gonna flip these. Oh, what's that, Richie? Another use for a fish spatula? Of course. The great thing about these fries is if they do get done before your fish, you're just gonna salt them. They're actually gonna firm up a little bit as they sit, so it's, it's gonna be fine. They'll actually get a little crispier. We're gonna put these back in, and we're gonna turn this down to 450.
We're gonna quick take them off the pan, stop the cooking, and we're gonna throw them in here, and then we're gonna to toss them with a little salt, just a little, a little flake salt. Look at that perfect crunch. Still nice and fluffy in the middle. Mmm. I got a perfect fry. Now, what are we gonna do? Mmm, tartar sauce. Come along with me down a road, I guess, of tartar sauce. So we're gonna do four pickles worth. This is bread and butter pickle. I didn't have any relish, but this is basically the same. So you're just gonna chop everything really finely. Make sure everything is chopped to the same consistency. Uh, we're gonna do one teaspoon of finely chopped shallot, shallot, shallot. And I'm gonna do about one tablespoon of dill chopped, and then I'm gonna do about the same of tarragon. Dill's powerful, don't overdo the dill. I like tarragon because it's a little citrusy, licorice flavor to it. And then we're gonna do a little bit of lemon. Take some extra time to make your tartar sauce. It is worth it. And then a half a cup of mayonnaise. Here, it's really, oh, that is really good. Yeah, it's really shallot. good. Thank you. It's bright, it's really sharp. Why oh, I more? just ate a shallot. There is some shallot in there if you don't like shallots. I just, oh shy gosh. Away. There is your four and a half minute tartar sauce. Shallots, optional. Super optional. Now what I recommend to all of you. <laughs> oh my God, why don't you just put it in a bag? <laughs> in a straw, that's insane. You put the end of the bag of chips in there with salsa and yogurt. How are you mixing case? it up so much? Because it's salsa soup, I love it. And the onions in here are okay. You'll eat flop slop onion, but you won't have perfectly diced shallot in a homemade tartar sauce. Where's your line? Where's your line? It's actually pretty good. I've, I've had it. Okay. So now we're gonna do the dredge, you guys. This is dredgement day. Doesn't make any sense, it's just a fun word to say. Judge dredgement. One cup of all purpose flour will do the trick. We're not making an angel food cake here, so I'm gonna do half and half. That is a cup. A little salt and pepper. You could use white pepper if you want a little more zing and zang in your, your fish and chips. I always fresh grind your, your pepper. You could use kosher salt, but it's heavy and it's gonna sink to the bottom. A fine grain table salt's gonna do you a little more justice in your dredgement day. Forrest, can you give me some like, cool motocross glasses. Good. Dredgement day. You need a quarter cup of, of cornstarch. Baking powder. Not baking soda, everyone. You learn in Home Ec 101. Baking powder that when combined with liquid, creates some bubbles, creates some lightness, some airiness. Don't skip it and don't substitute it for baking soda. And then the little secret ingredient that everybody has in their cupboard, um, Old Bay. Okay, so you're just gonna mix your dredge. We're gonna put about a quarter cup of this dredge into a, what is this called? A Ziploc bag. That's gonna just create a nice, really light breading on the, on the halibut, or rockfish, or lingcod, or whatever you have. Now, we move into mm, the star fish. Not a whole lot of prep needed for your, for your fish. Really all we're gonna do is cut them into chunks. Find the natural creases in your fish. So try to get them as even as you can. Um, that's gonna help the cooking process as always. Let's heat our pan. These guys are seasoned. So I'm gonna put some oil in this pan, about two inches. That's a lot of oil. It's a lot of oil, everyone. Whoa! Excuse me. While your oil is heating, we are going to do a quick dry dredge of our fish and we're gonna set that in here to stage it and then we're going to at the very last minute. It's 76 degrees, Richie. Are you kidding? I didn't set it at 76. You're Captain Freezer. Cat, it's the temperature in the house. It's the ambient temperature. I didn't turn Richie, it to heat to it. Tell about your little 
this and how cold they are in the morning? I have cold feet. He does. Put a comment below and let me know if your feet are too also cold. Do you turn the, the heat up in the middle of the night like Ricardo? Here? Enough now. We have to powder our halibut. Okay, so if these, uh, if these emitted a lot of um, water from the salting process, give them a good pat. I think mine are okay. I'm gonna just throw a couple pieces at a time and then you're gonna do the old shake and bake and I helped trick. Make sure you seal it. Keep a little air in there. So what's left in here for powder is about three quarter cup. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna mix this seltzer water or beer, anything with some bubbles in it. And the trick is do it at the end so that your, ooh, your bubbles, um, well, so they, they last, right? You're looking for a consistency that's a little thinner than pancake batter. Now we're getting close. Now we're getting close. Look at how beautiful this is. That Old Bay gives it this really nice, deep, rich color. Our oil is almost perfect. Our fries are ready and waiting. Tartar sauce in the fridge cooling. You guys did this perfectly. 375 degrees is where you want your oil. So the reason your oil needs to be 375 to 400 is if it's too cold, your fish are just gonna sit there and soak up the oil. If it's too hot, they're gonna overcook and the crust is gonna burn and the inside won't be cooked. You'll wanna do this in batches too. Um, we probably have two batches worth of fish here, otherwise your oil temperatures are gonna drop way too low if you do all this fish at once. So we'll do half and half. When you guys flip them, make sure you don't drop it because it will splatter and, you know, just be, be safe out there. Be safe out there. You may not know it, but Ooh, I have a crush on Keely. Some hobbit. You want to try one now? Oh, this is so flaky. Look how flaky this is. It's try really it. good. This is the flakiest, like most delicious. Very good. Mmm. That fish is my favorite. God darn it, that's good. Okay. Don't eat that. Together? Don't eat it. Oh, you're going to try that part? Oh my, my gosh. gosh. How good is that? You guys, fish and chips. Oil your potatoes in a vinegar salt. Slice them thick, bake them, high heat. Get that fish seasoned, yep. good breading, a little Old Bay, goes a long way. Mm -hmm. And then gather your family when it's done and eat it. Thank you to our fishermen out there for catching our halibut or your lingcod or your rockfish. You guys make this all possible. Thank you, thank you to our members out there as well. Eat your fish every day. Make it a family thing. Gather around the fish. You know where it came from. It makes you feel good. It is a responsibly harvested, incredible fish. If you don't know what Sika Salmon Shares is, come on and join us. It's SikkaSalmonShares.com. Explore what we do. We have lots of different shares available. Um, you get your fish April through December, right to your door. It's really easy. And you know who the heck your fisherman is, which is the whole purpose of this, knowing where your food comes from. You are the only fisherman that I love. Oh my God, my heart. <sighs> That's it, you guys. I don't know what we're gonna do next time, but as always, we will figure it out together. So stay great. Stay wild. Stay wild. And we'll see you next time. Oh, we're all good this is. Try dipping a french fry in there. Mm -hmm. I know. Mm -hmm. Try it. I will. Support comes from Sitka Salmon Shares, a community-supported fishery bringing you a share of responsibly harvested wild Alaskan seafood. SitkaSalmonShares.com